Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning. Good morrow. Uh, wonderful to see you all here for another exciting installment of Schwenzon's Tower. I believe Dr. Timothy is standing by and eager to fly you with his homework. Is it true, Tim? Hmm. Any minute now, I suppose. Uh, well, cool. I'll use the time to thank you for being here. And to thank the live translators whose lips I see moving furiously already. I marvel at your amazing ability to uh, not just follow the material consistently. The rest of us get to space out every now and then and lose track of what's going on, but not you. You have to follow every word. We're depending on you. And we're very grateful. Uh, we're grateful to everyone um, involved in the, the Good Night Book Club. Uh, I really, I think it's a, a delightful thing to see so many people subscribing. Um, finding ways to participate, and I'm sure you're all putting away your electronics at night, uh, for which I, I am salute ben. you. Good. I'm very impressed to hear that. Black on black, it's a good look. Yeah, it's sort of yeah. a little tight these days, it but we're working on it. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, you're like Johnny Cash. Just like John and Cash, yes. Yeah, I've always thought that about you, but but now the black on black really brings it all home. I uh, I give you the the wheel, the plane, the terrain. All right, all right wonderful. Um, you know, it's one. It's really, it's really wonderful if people turn on their cameras, so we mm -hmm. can see you. You know, I know it's sometimes some of us are shy and don't want to, but it's really helpful, especially for us as we're teaching or trying to do this, that we we can actually see you and then see your faces and then see how you're reacting. Because that helps helps me make sure I'm go, giving going things at the right speed as well. So we got six people with their cameras turned on. That was great. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Hi, Tracy. Good to see you. Hi, Violet. See, and you, and you get your name called out as well. All right. So let's start with some. All right. So our last class was about three weeks ago, three and a half weeks ago. And we were in Mexico. We had a for those of you that miss Mexico, you miss something really, really special. Um, not that I'm going to rub it in that you weren't there, but if if you weren't there, you miss something really, really special. So if you have an opportunity to watch those classes again, um, it's really some of the finest classes I've seen maybe ever. Um, so including this translation class, which was a lot of fun because there were 200 people in the room who had never been to a translation class before. So we got to show them how confusing it can be and challenging and, and rewarding as well. So let's get started. Uh, so we're in a section where we're trying to def define what is the speech of a Buddha and what and where can the speech of the Buddha be? Like, is the speech of the Buddha something that's just the words that are spoken from the mouth of a Buddha? Or can they be elsewhere? Like, if they're written down in the text, does that count? Or if you have it memorized in your head, does that still count as the speech of the Buddha? Or is there something different between the words in my head as a non-Buddha versus the words that are spoken out of the the divine mouth of a Buddha, something like that. So we need to, we're figuring all that out and we're debating this. So our debater comes along and is trying to define that speech and keeps giving us different options. And our debater claims that 
anything that is considered the speech of a Buddha must be in the mind of someone who has eliminated all their obstacles to Buddhahood. So why does our debater say this? Like what? That's exactly what it sounds like to me too. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) So why does our, how does the debater say, why does the debater say this? If something's in the mind of a, if something is the speech of the Buddha, it must be in the mind of someone who has eliminated all their obstacles to Buddhahood. The Buddhists mm. have eliminated all the obstacles to Buddhahood? Yeah. Yeah, and only them. And so, therefore... They've got 60, 64 amazing qualities of their speech. Yeah, that's um, that's at the end of the class. Uh, that's... So that's true, but not in this debate. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's therefore, fine. Oh, I, you have the text up there, so that's I what do? I was looking at. Yeah. Oh, you guys, aren't, you guys aren't looking at what I'm looking at. Oh, that's awesome. Let's yeah. try this. Ta-da! Sorry. No, uh, that's perfect. Let's try this again. <laughs> All right. Now you can see the correct thing, correct? Um, assuming it's the homework, then yes. The quiz, yes. yeah. Yes. Therefore, um, only someone who's a Buddha can have the speech of a Buddha in their mind. Correct, right. But that's, I'm just drawing the same, basically said it all already. Is that a, mm-hmm. someone who has eliminated their obstacles to Buddhahood would, of course, have their speech would be speech of a Buddha. Right, that that makes sense. Like to me, it makes sense. Like if you've eliminated all your obstacles to Buddhahood, then this your speech would be a speech of a Buddha. Seems okay. Okay, so that that's that sounds okay. Mm. But question number two: Is it necessarily the case that the speech of a Buddha is in the mind of someone who has eliminated all their obstacles to Buddhahood? Yes. Mm, maybe you not. Put, you have to put only in there or something. Yeah, yeah, only. Yes, that's correct. Mm-hmm. In the uh, speech of the Buddha, the mind is. Otherwise, I agree with Ben. Yeah, or you could say right. Okay, could that's this... fine. You're you're, you're you correct. Go. You got. Thank you for the for the <laughs> the correction. Could... Only should be after Buddha, no? The speech of the Buddha only in the mind of someone. It can be in both. Okay. Who has only eliminated? It uh, depends on what the distinction is. Is it the distinction mm-hmm. between an enlightened being and a person? Or is it a distinction between the mind of someone? Depends what, what, on what your It probably ends up being both. But we'll, we'll do it this way. This would work, I think. Yeah, go for it, Tim. Yeah. Uh, is so, only, not only is. Now we agree that we disagree. <laughs> now that we're correct in the statement on the screen. <laughs> uh, now that we're correct in the statement on the screen being incorrect. Being incorrect, correct. Yes. So is it necessarily the case? <laughs> The speech of the Buddha is only in the mind of someone who has eliminated all the obstacles to Buddhahood. Yes, it isn't. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, it isn't. Correct. Why? (laughs) Because you can memorize something a Buddha said, even if you're not a Buddha? Correct. I've heard heard that it is possible. Okay, (laughs) now the the only way that I'm going to get the answer to Pierce to go to change the sentence here no because someone like me can have those words in my mind and i can say those words without necessarily being a buddha myself Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right cool great there we go let's go then ben can memorize the om sutra oh you can even you can you can even do some hand gestures as well yeah but i was confused those uh oh let's say the debater tries again to prove that the speech of the Buddha in someone's mind 
must make that mind a mind that has eliminated all obstacles to Buddhahood by making a comparison to the body of a Buddha. What is this comparison and why is it flawed? Well, Tim, let's say the Buddha chose to write down his words. Then wouldn't the words of the Buddha be written on a paper? And that paper wouldn't be the enlightened mind of a Buddha, would it? Well, that, that's correct, but that doesn't answer the question of having anything to do with the body of the Buddha. So he makes a specific comparison to the body of a Buddha. Well, I think it does because the paper would be analogous to the body of a Buddha. Just because it's in someone's body doesn't mean it's an enlightened body of the Buddha. Um it uh, that's not the comparison he makes <laughs> okay that's not that's the comparison the right, right we we mm. because so, because ben memorized the om sutra <laughs> that's why it's not necessarily the case that mm. okay Isn't so it something like uh, go ahead who, it wasn't something like um, if it is the body of a Buddha, then it has to be the body of someone who has eliminated our obstacles. So if it is the speech of a Buddha, then it has to be the speech of someone who has eliminated obstacles. Exactly. Right. You, you, you were sitting right next to me when we did this. So good thing you remembered. <laughs> yeah. So the comparison, the debater's trying to say that if um, let's take the body of a Buddha. The body of a Buddha is uh, body of a Buddha is someone who has eliminated the person who the being that possesses the body of a Buddha is one who has eliminated all their obstacles. So therefore, the same applies to their speech as well. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily, because Ben memorized the Om Sutra. Exactly right, and so it's not a. It's a it's kind of a it's an interesting argument, but it's not correct. All right. We've got three vocabulary words here. Horsum che. That's what I end up doing whenever I debate Ben. Oh. <laughs> okay, can you explain what that means? <laughs> I turn around on myself and end up disagreeing with something that I asserted earlier. Yeah, ben, Ben's really good at doing that to people. Of showing yeah. my my fallacies, yes. So yeah, so it basically means that you're contradicting yourself or that you've agreed to something and agreed to something else which contradicts what you agreed to previously. Yeah. All right, the second one, Mijepe Sung. The, the Tohani of never forget, not forgetting? Correct. And Kunme. No problem, man. Uh, uh, maybe a little bit more technical translation. Um, uh, there's no fault in my argument, something like that? Flawless or faultless, yes. Okay. All right, cool. Nice job, everybody. So that's where we are. Let's look at some. Let's go back to what you guys were looking at before. Mm -hmm. All right. So we started this. Is it big? Is it big enough on the screen for everybody? Huge. Me. Is Huge. that? We make it larger. Huge. No. Uh, no. no. Oh my god, that's so big. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Terrifying. All right. Um, we started this at the end of the class, and we didn't finish it, so we'll go back to the beginning here. So our debater is still. We're in the section of the debate where we give, we very politely give the Kachik, the debater, an opportunity to challenge us again, very politely. Um, so we're going to, hey, this is the debater coming back again. So let's have, I'm looking at you, Venerable Cotting. Can you read this section, please? Kachik. Chakpa Shari Puri Gyuki 
Ka J Tong Pa Cho Chin. How about this word right here? J. Gay. Gay. Gay Tong Pa Cho Chin. Kyo Sung Chang Yan Lak Druk Chu Tang Den Partal. Don't Do you think know if that's think up or down. So, so if the debater's coming back. Oh, and, portal. What was that an up or down? Up. Uh, maybe. Let's see. Let's, 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 <laughs> let's, let's see. Okay. Kyo sung ge ki sung yin pe cheer. Nice. Good job. All right. Is Oscar translating? No. He's not. Um, Oscar, if you were sitting next to me when we started this, so let, let's continue together on it. Okay. I forgot the original already. Perfect. Mm. No one just do that. <laughs> I, I I hear you might be going back to Sarah in November. I might, yeah. Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, it is. All right, so we have the Kachik, they've come back. So let's, let's let's do the Chochen, the subject here. Consider mm, do you want me to do the yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So far, so good. So far, <laughs> consider so, so uh, an area uh um, Sharipu or the area Shariputra. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Consider the mind of the area Shariputra uh, on the 100, on the 8,000 verses. Right, so let, let's build this a little bit backwards. In the 8,000, the words, the 8,000 verses of the perfection of wisdom, mm -hmm. it's considered the speech of the Buddha in the mind of Shariputra, the realized being. Correct. Okay, so we're considering the words of the Buddha in the mind of Shariputra. Mm -hmm. uh, right. um, I wish it. I wish it was not a key. Hey, word. What do you think? Does the key make you feel weird about it being in the mind? Wouldn't we usually use a Ladun particle? We've been. Uh, we, yeah. It, uh, it, it's been. It's been like this for the previous sections here. Okay. Okay. Yuki, okay, knock. Um, See there, he said knock instead of ga also. All right. right. That's okay. and, yeah, because he keeps switching it. Okay. To okay. try to make a point. So it's somewhere okay. else as well. Where is it? There, seeing up here, it's. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. Yeah, here oh. we here's, here's another option of it. Yuki, ka. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Sure enough. Okay. And and Ben Kramer, the, the use of the genitive is extremely flexible in Tibetan. Sure. I'm yeah. it's used all kinds of ways I'm learning recently. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good question. All right. So now we're on the, the second part. Mm. Let's consider the the words from the eight thousand verses, the words of the Buddha in the mind of Shariputra. All right. What's going on here, Oscar? Are you saying that um, the 60, oh, this is like this, this 60 qualities mm -hmm. of uh, speech? Correct. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that he has the 60 qualities of a speech of um, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you are, are you saying he has the 60 qualities of, of of his speech? Who has the 60 qualities of speech? Sharipu. Sariputra, right? Mm -hmm. So what would that make that tal? Up or down? Down. Mm -hmm. Why? Are you because you're not agreeing with you're refuting this, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
because right. just just because he's got eight thousand verses in his head doesn't yeah. mean he's a Buddha that has these sixty qualities because only Buddhas have them. The, 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 let's finish up with what the Kachik says first before we decide. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because uh, he has the holy speech of a Buddha. Not has. Because it is yeah, the holy no. speech. Oh, it is. Holy is speech yeah. mm. Right. That is the speech of a Buddha. Yeah. Right. So in this case, so he's saying. Let's consider the 8,000 verses, the speech of the Buddha, which is in the mind of Shariputra. Are you saying that Shariputra, or are you saying that speech? I'm not sure which one. Are you saying that it possesses those 60 qualities? Why would you say that? Because then that speech is the speech of the Buddha. Because it is the speech of the because Buddha. Because it is the speech of the Buddha. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because you is the speech of the Buddha. You did. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's so what it is. You're right, Mark's the subject. Cute does. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if it's like his telling of it or something, right? Like hmm. his, his speaking of that sutra has these qualities um mm. uh, because they are the speech of the Buddha. Um kind of pushing the kit a little bit, but I I think it's saying he 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 then must possess those qualities because it is the speech of the mm -hmm. Buddha. Yeah. Are those yeah. qualities that belong to a being or are those qualities that belong to speech? Right. That's the argument, right? Okay. <laughs> Right, because it, is it the speech well, of the Buddha? To, no, to a being, not to speech. Right, but right. that's what's okay. calling it. There, I think that Q is like an it here, because it's it's uh -huh. Buddha speech. No, what about the second Q then? I mean, the first Q. But in oh, a but... syllogism, Q will mark what the subject is. So Q soon is uh, that, that speech. That speech. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. And yeah. so the, then the second Q is referring back to that first Q. Yeah. That or it. Yeah, so so that uh -huh. speech possesses the 60 qualities. Are you saying it possesses uh -huh. 60 qualities? Why? Because that speech is the speech of the Buddha. Yeah. That's how I read it. Is you is or is you ain't the speech of the Buddha? I know my way was funnier. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes sense. Fine. <laughs> Okay, so, and now our our Kachik is going to give us another reason why. Who would like, I believe it's the Kachik. <laughs> Not 100% certain. Um, how, about, how about Venerable Cotting? Am I starting at the second paragraph on this screen? Correct, yep. Kyapte, yeah. dude. De gien le, de shik sung ni ta yaste, yan lak druk chu sam ki sung mi kyab che sung pe chu. Okay, so I'm taking this is how I'm taking this, and I, I I'm not hundred percent certain yet. Is that if this if if this is the case, right? It must be the case because mm -hmm. it says in the Dodegian. That's how I'm reading it. Does but maybe yeah. yeah. It seems that way. Yeah, that's me. right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. If something is the uh speech of the Buddha, then it must be a thing which has the sixty-four qualities because Dodegin says the following. Yeah. All right. So this is what it says in the following. All right. Deshek. Who's that? Who does? Who does? The guy who went to Happy. Bliss Blissers. The Blissers? Mm -hmm. I like that. The Blissers. Mm -hmm. 
uh, Sunni in this case. That knee is throw away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, their it's speech a... is. And then, and how is their speech, Taye? Infinite. Yeah. So, so the the Buddha speech is infinite. What does Samikya mean? Inconceivable. Inconceivable, Yang Lak Drup Chu. The 60-ish quality. <laughs> Why is it the 60-ish word? Because there's actually 64, but for some reason they say 60. I have no idea why. Mm. Probably because it fits better in, in meter, because you would need to have another four. You would have to have another syllable, maybe? <laughs> They do it even out of meter, but whatever whatever we want to say, he's fine. <laughs> he said it in the debate for some reason too. You know, we're, right. we're coming from a verse. Just they they always say sixty. They never say sixty four. I mean, sixty yeah. odd. I guess we could say yeah, sixty ish, sixty some. Yeah. So it's so the Buddha, the speech, the the Buddha, the Buddha's speech is taille expansively infinite and it possesses so this is what i didn't understand what to do with this like it's inconceivably and it possesses 60 ish qualities yeah, no, it's, it's the it's inconceivable 60, 60 qualities are, the inconceivable. Yeah, yeah 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 okay i see okay because it, so it's go ahead word inconceivable is a common phrase to describe the speech of an enlightened being or term same with the mind and the body i believe <laughs> so we're basically saying they're infinitely inconceivable and those inconceivable have 60 some qualities <laughs> yeah somehow it's infinite but it has six qualities <laughs> 60 qualities <laughs> i don't think that word means what they think it means which one oh tie um <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. I think I think it's saying the six the qual the speech itself is infinite and that the 60 qualities, while identifiable, are inconceivable in their amazingness. Yeah, so so our so our Kachik is saying, well, look, the, the speech of the Buddha has to possess these 60 qualities because in the Sutra Alankara, the Mahayana Sutra Alankara, the Dode again it says this. So therefore, using scriptural reference to prove that that's the case. Yeah. yeah. Right. So being that this is the Kachik. Yeah. Are we sure it's the Kachik? It is the Kachik, yes. Yeah, that sounds right. I'm yeah, here. the Kachik is saying, yeah. Yeah, yeah, if it's the Buddha's speech, look, if it's the Buddha's speech, it says right here in the yeah. in the, the Jalankara, well, if it's I, the Buddha's I, I, speech. I, I, I'll just say it is it is the kachik because the next thing says serna. Yeah, no, and yeah. it's clear because of the yeah. kyabte. It's like, yeah, he believes it. He's yeah, saying it's, it's true. Yeah, yeah it's, it is so the case true because it's, yeah, yeah. Must be so. Right. So yeah. if this yeah. is the kachik, what do we believe is wrong? What do we think is wrong with this argument that we're going to mm -hmm. destroy the next sentence? That there's only sixty. Yeah. <laughs> It's quite nope. well, it's quite conceivable. Some kept... <laughs> I think just because just because the words are in your mind doesn't mean that the Buddhist yeah. speech is in your mind or something like that. Well, no, just well because he had a soft. Well, that your speech or the speech of Shariputra possesses the sixty qualities just because it's in just because the speech is in his mind doesn't necessarily mean that his, his speech, speech right. possesses those sixty ish qualities. He that's, that's what I was trying he's to say defended the idea that if something is three, it must be two, but he did not defend the idea that one is three. So it's, we can still say yeah. that, uh, that the, yeah. eight thousand verses spoken by, spoken from the mind of Shariputra are what not. What doesn't say they're spoken in his mind. They're just in his mind. Yeah, even yeah. more to the point. <laughs> but he's conflating Gyu with Sung. That's the whole, right? Yeah. Gyu is not Sung. 
He said the words. He did say words in the mind. Yeah. Yeah. Good. He didn't, yeah, he you're right. You is not so. Yeah. That, right. That's that nice. Yeah. That's the trick. Great. Yeah, that's great. I yeah, mean, it makes really nice. With, yeah. yeah. Or charge, or charge. you key is not so especially right. Right. So that, yeah, that, great. Let's say that. Um, just sort of so we can before um, we move, let's say it very clearly so the translators can get it for everybody else too. Yeah. Wait, wait, Dama, Drew, it is not the case that the 8,000 verses in the mind of Shariputra are the spoken word of the Buddha or the holy speech of the Buddha. Yeah. Because we're conflating the idea of, of speech in the mind with something that is said out loud. Yeah, right. yeah, which is well conflated by uh, the use of the word ga, uh, mm -hmm. which means holy speech also sometimes. Um, right. But maybe we're learning a distinction then between those as well. All right, let's see what he says. Let's see how right we are. Mm. Well, something can be w internal words without being external words. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. right. So are we learning that Ga could be either in some can't? I don't know. I guess then we would maybe. still have to tackle the debate if Shariputra recited the sutra. Mm. Would that then be? But so... Thankfully, he did not say that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably get to that. Maybe Shariputra didn't bother ever doing that. Probably not. Yeah. All right. Let's grab. Let's see who would like to read. Well, it's a problem because the Buddha probably never was the one to write it down. Yeah. So right. Someone wrote it. They were just a puppet. Possibly. Hey, hey Mike <laughs> Hoffman, can you read the next line? <laughs> Who was reading it? Mike Hoffman. Oh. Is his speech going to be the speech hmm. of the Buddha? If he, oh no, that line is not okay. <laughs> We're Thanks. safe. Mike Hoffman's from Philly. Everything he says is the speech of the Buddha. <laughs> At least it's the <laughs> speech of Ketrup Tempa Targi. Devnai, yom mede, sangye pakpe yuki sungla gongpe in pejir. Okay. All right. So this is this is us coming back to destroy his argument. Serna can mete. What does that mean? Uh, it, if you claim that it's without flaw, <laughs> if your argument it doesn't is, bother us. Yeah, if your argument is so flawless, no. Kind no, of if you say that we're not, it doesn't stress us out. It's not a problem for us. It doesn't hurt our position. That, that that's a nicer way of saying it, Ben. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what's the reason that we get, and and it's based on this word here, gongpa. Yeah, because the sangye pakpe gyu, uh, the Buddha Arya's mind stream um the song the words of it um uh, because they are in interpreted because it is the true intent it, it is i think lines up with the true intent of the words in the mind stream of um, Arya buddha yeah right okay so this is like so how does that how does that destroy his argument indeed He's, I think I think what he's saying is that yeah, that speech has hmm. the qualities of a Buddha speech, but it doesn't mean that Shariputra somehow has that quality. Or or is, it, or is it that isn't that so that the intention of the of the words in the mind stream of an Arya Buddha, right? So that would be would the intention of the words be they are then the words in a mind of a non-Buddha, and that's okay. Uh, or that was the intention of the 60 qualities, that having those, those, the speech has those 60 qualities, and that it, and that is, how do I say this? 
well, basically we're going to get into what is the what is the intention of the speech of the Buddha is actually what the next thing that comes up. But the qualities imply intent? I don't think so. Well, I'm wondering if intent, Gompa, here means like what we mean by speech. Like the, mm. the understanding, the, the true meaning of the term uh, here when we're talking about speech is, is sung and not ga. It's not... Um, That's interesting. So so what does that la, do, that la mean? As... Yeah. As, um, yeah, it yeah. could be something like that. What we're t that's an interesting take on it. I would not have thought of that, but it could be mean saying because the what we're saying here is that this is the sung in the mind stream, not the ka. So it just means the real meaning. Gongpa. Yeah. What we're really saying it that's interesting. When we say ka, we mean sung and so Yeah, or like when you like you're saying ka, but we just mean sung, yeah. So we agree hmm. with the whole thing? I don't know. That's interesting. No, we, we don't agree. And we can't agree because um, because of the Serena, I right. think. But the Kyun Mei um, and the Kyun the opposite? Serena Kyun Mei Te. If you claim that, no problem. I think it has, I still think it has something to do with the fact that he's saying that that speech is Buddha's speech, but sh that doesn't mean Shariputra possesses the qualities. That's where I think it's well, going. Well, okay. Let's okay, uh, we would have to change our interpretation a little bit of that previous syllogism to be referring to Shariputra and not the speech. Mm -hmm. um, uh -oh. Does the speech, and uh -oh. there's that question is. again. So you is was right? No, no, well, I was thinking. I'm not more... convinced, yeah. <laughs> no, I was thinking that's why we're saying Sernakyun Mei. Like, no problem, because that speech is does the speech. It just doesn't mean that the... it has... 64 qualities well uh, who has the 64 qualities or what has the 64 qualities i i asked that question again is it the speech that has 64 qualities or the buddha that has 64 qualities yeah i understand the buddha has the 64 qualities of speech the speech has 64 qualities <laughs> totally different qualities i don't know yeah does the Same buddha have quality. 64 qualities of speech or does the buddha's speech have 64 quality yeah well, they usually refer to it as the 64 60 odd qualities of the buddha's speech <laughs> right J yeah. Jewish. yeah right and so i wonder and it you know, I wouldn't rule out that this is um, why the gongba here is the sung. Yeah, that, that's interesting. Well, ka comes in like the next line or so, so let's see. Right. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like we're on to another debate. Yeah, as it yeah it's a whole other debate, yeah. So yeah. the, the Buddha's words, when chance. the Buddha speaks them, when a Buddha speaks words i can say the same words as an ordinary being mm. and those words will not have the quality of being heard in the language of each person who hears it that's the qualities are not in the speech um, the qualities right. are which is why in yeah. the well in the person hearing but uh the qualities are you know in the buddha that was beautiful yeah. in like 63 ways of power i understood it Almost. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The the only way being that he didn't hear it in Sanskrit. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, right. I can memorize the Om Sutra, but uh but I'm still gonna get funny looks from people when I go trying to recite it at the mall. <laughs> <laughs> so I would so I just maybe if we say there's no problem here because this is what I'm hearing you all say is Mm. The, the the true intent of all of that is that when you have the speech of the Buddha in your mind, that was what the Buddha was intending when he had the speech of, he had his own speech in his own mind. Perhaps, because then, the purpose of this, everything it, what's that? Aren't we agreeing with the whole thing? Then? Um. I don't understand why we 
that's where I, because basically he's using the, the, the reason to say there's no problem because that's the case. And there's something, I'm something I don't quite, not quite following. The La and the Gongpa is the only real deviation. So the answer mm -hmm. is there. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, I would guess Gongpa refers to the meaning of the quotation. Mm -hmm. So this is no problem for us because the intent, I think you could probably supply of these verses oh, is cool. to refer to the spoken word. I don't know, in the mind of a Buddha. Uh, or or you don't even have to say that, right? Because we're talking about Shariku. Um, there's an assumption that with these words, they're talking about a Buddha, right? So yeah, you can make this wild assertion about Shariputra, but this verse isn't talking about Shariputra because Shariputra is not a Buddha. And the intention uh, of this verse is to describe the words of a Buddha, not someone else speaking a Buddha's words. I think you're right, Ben. Yeah, the whole thing is about the verse, not about the whole I think so. I think he's right. Yeah, Serna, if if that, yeah, you claim the thing is about that, Kyunme, we, we have no problem with this verse. It doesn't prove your point because yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah, because every, no, everyone knows they're talking about Buddhas here. Yeah, they say, they, <laughs> they, they did say it. <laughs> I was there. Everyone who can read Tibetan knows. Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, Cool. Even even the odd Sanskritist. <laughs> All right. Well, in next class, we will get the answer from Geshe Michael. About the <laughs> All right, cool. All right. So the next time, so the Kachi comes back and is basically saying, Oh, well, since we're since we started talking about the intent of the Buddha's speech or the intent of the speech in the mind of the Buddha. The Kachik says, well, actually, this is what's going on. So basically says, well, forget you. We're going to have another debate. <laughs> uh -huh. that, that part we all agree <laughs> on. That's what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> like, fine. What, it's like, you're fine, right? Whatever. Let's move on to another round. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. How about, oh, let's see here. How about Kelsey? Hello. Let's just read, read these two lines. Okay. Kachi Sange ki kayinan kayinna dulce nyomun on cheer dusumpe kapartel gyub lama le. Okay. That was not very good. Let's figure this out. All right. So Arkachi comes back. Nice job. Do you want to try it out, Gelsey? I think you can do most no. of it. No? No. <laughs> okay. The All speech right. of a Buddha. So far, so good. <laughs> nice. Against your will. <laughs> you got this? It was, it was it's of yourself. It's going it's Is it a negative? Mm, nope. No. I, I don't know. It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. if something is yeah. if something is the speech of a buddha right excellent mm -hmm. i don't know dual j oh you know dual ja dual ja related to someone who needs to be tamed like a related horse to the oh word I am. like dual wa. okay yeah exactly something about um taming nope. your mental afflictions mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. So basically, to re yeah to remove the, the negative emotions, afflictions of students, mm -hmm. disciples. Okay. okay. With cheer, the... cheer do what does cheer do mean? I don't know. It means in order to, in order to, or... in order yeah. to, for the sake of. So we're because... basically saying that speech. Yeah. Right. 
the, the speech of a Buddha. It's was, purpose. Yeah. Is to, yeah. Is to pong the nungmons of Dulce's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, yes, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, Buddha, the Buddha speech was spoken in order to eliminate or end the negative emotions of uh, disciples. Yeah. Yinna, if something is the Buddha speech, then Kyabartal, it necessarily must be something that was spoken for the sake of eliminating negative emotions from disciples. That sounds really nice so hmm. far. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then or you should or disciples negative emotions, I guess technically. On that subject. On that subject. So the the cheer. Wait, did mm. we read this part? We didn't read it. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh. Yes. So the cheer is what's coming up next. Okay. Uh, the reason that our that our kachi gives will be. Let's see. Who would like to read? How about Tracy? Okay. Starting with Kong. Starting oh. with there. Okay. Gyu Lama Le Kong Shik Don Den Chu Dang Nier Drelpa Kam Sum Kun Ne Nyon Mong Pong Pe Pong Chir Sung Shi Wei Pen Yun Ton Par Sepa Kong Te Ni Drong Rong Sung Yin Dok Pa Shen was that song wrong? <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was wrong. Song. Song. Oh, it was <laughs> wrong song. <laughs> wrong, wrong was wrong. It was song. Wrong, it's song. <laughs> song sung yin dak dok pa shen she sung pe cheer serna. Okay, good. So the reason that our kachik is going to use to prove that if something is a speech of a Buddha it must necessarily be the case that that speech was spoken for the purpose of removing mental afflictions or the negative emotions of students. So that quote comes from Gyu Lama. Where's that? Tracy, do you know what that's from? It's in the Sanskrit there with a really- Is it a path? The higher one? Really cool is it a path? There. Mahayana path? It's yeah, Mahayana what? <laughs> uh the path of tantra utara tantra yeah. oh tantra. Tantra. yeah and and i know if i were christina Kasica who suddenly <laughs> turned on her her camera i would be thinking about the exciting sunday uh, -huh. uh for for new people to sunday when an a touches an a u, u. it becomes an o so mahayana Uttara Tantra becomes Mahayano Tuta, Mahayano Tara Tantra. Yeah, it's really Uttara Tantra, but yeah. it's Sandhi, right? Yeah. Cool. All right. So we could go ahead and translate this, or, or if we or we scroll gosh. down here, <laughs> Gel Sub J has a commentary on these four lines. Oh, uh, that's cool. So we're gonna it's gonna help us translate these four lines. Maybe. Oh, it's not. Have you read I'm just saying we're, we're gonna be with this guy for a while. <laughs> we're gonna get a little bit of help. <laughs> All right. Fire in there, yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's read the first part, first line here. How about Roxana? Where it says Nipani. Okay. Uh, Nipani. Sung Kang Shi Kepui Nekaptang Tartuki Tun Numpar Chupatang Dempatang. Can you keep going to the next to the next lines here? Sure. Until the... Joche Ki Tsiki Kyon Tadak Tang Drillway Chutang Newar Drill Shing. All right. Good. Why is the Shing? 
uh, in 16 point. Mm. Oh, shame. It's not in the poem, is it? Mm -mm. All right. No. You, you feel better now? Uh, no. <laughs> it happens, I, but I feel just as bad as I did a second ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> His hand <laughs> slipped, that's all. And <laughs> was it on purpose? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> of course. It was, it, it was teacher the teacher something. <laughs> I <All> didn't right. <laughs> learn. <laughs> okay, so let's see if we can translate this first line with Gels of Jade's commentary. Second, comment what's that? Secondly. Secondly. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Thank nice you. Okay. okay. Off to a good <laughs> start. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sung Kang Shi. K boy, K boo. Mm, yes. Whatever, whatever is, whatever words or whatever speech. Um, I, I think Khan Sheik here means peoples. People? Uh, any anybody, yeah. Right. I think when he says any old Khan Sheik, any old, yeah. that it means K boos here, individuals, purushas. Anyone's anyone right. speech. Yeah, I see. Yeah. So any any ones, yeah, and he's speaking he in that context. speech in the context of people, right? Anyone oh, speak yeah. and, and with Nakop, with Na not not ultimate. I think in Nakop here means in the context of people. Yeah, like, in, we're talking no, about people in no, the context of this verse. Mm -mm, Nakop oh. on Tartu. Oh yeah, look at that. There's a Tartu temporary and ultimate. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Yeah. Too. Great. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so it, 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 let's go to the end, and it'll help us get get through what all that means. <laughs> no, it won't. <laughs> it, it'll uh, help. Yeah. Promise. <laughs> so the speech, it Dung Dempa, it, right? Which has it possesses. Uh -huh. uh, Jipa, I can't remember what. Expression, talking, subject, or speech, yeah, what he's talking about, what he's talking uh, about, yeah, uh -huh. oh. Oh. Uh -huh. okay, I think I got it. I, I, so, I, okay. is, is an individual speech, whether anyone, whether it is uh temporary or ultimate, and tun is the meaning of what is being said, meaning the um the overall expression or why it's being expressed and wow. that's what it possesses. i think he's embedding it. he's a he's like um annotating yes that's for sure yeah but, i think so okay well can we join it with the um what well, well, the 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 dun gets modified by these two right uh oh whether we're talking about the Temporary or, or ultimate meaning or the goal. Benedict, I think it is. Oh. Benedict. Yeah. The goal. I yeah, yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. Short yeah, or the, short or short term the, or long term goals. The aim, <laughs> the art of. Yeah, bless you. Totally. Okay. Yeah, <sighs> great. So it's like whomever's speech possesses the subject matter of temporary or in, or ultimate goals something like of that of people actually so that's kebu actually no the gong sheik is is just yeah. modifying the soon so any speech that whose intention or, or is expressed with the goal of helping temporary ultimate goals of people that's the yeah. kebu okay yeah so yeah. whomever kebu. speech meaning anybody's speech uh, it's, it's, uh, it's it could be any speech. I think it's any speech. I I, speech I retract you, my yeah. assertion about it being any kebu. I mm -hmm. was wrong, I believe. It okay. seems. Yeah. So so okay. any speech that has yeah. as a subject matter. Yeah. The purpose the, or, or yeah long term as, goals. As its aim. Of, of yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's aim. <laughs> it's aim to 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 help beings with their temporary and ultimate goals yeah it's yeah. target yeah it's expressed That's for it. that purpose exactly yeah Th then all and right and, and, and we're and we're dealing with the next now, part 
We're not. Oh yeah, we're kind of there. Yeah, we're, uh, we are, we haven't made it out of the first half of a line yet. We're getting well, there. Thanks, to okay. Gelsip, Jay. We're getting close. Do you take it thick? The, the, the words that it, what those words mean right they express words mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the words that are expressed by yeah the tongue, right yeah yeah are are free of each and every, of any problems yeah yeah totally free of some yeah, yeah. Can, you, totally. can you could you gloss yourself on that word sure um kyun means problem Hadak mm -hmm. means each and every, but Tang Chrelwa means free or devoid of. So instead of saying mm -hmm. not having each and every, you just said not having any in English. So mm -hmm. Having no problems, not having any problems. Okay. So so the uh, so all of this mm -hmm. is being is related to Ch. No, it's related to Den. Yeah, the that's that the speech possesses no problems. Any all the words it expresses are without problems. Now now we go. I mean, the last it could connect the den to the chu. I'm not saying it doesn't do that. What's um near our drill? So cross come connect to connect. To connect. <laughs> Sorry, Gibson, what did you say? No, I just want to say cross connect to the Dharma, right? Yeah. Closely yeah. connected to okay. the uh huh. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is he saying all of this is related, is defined by these words here? He's saying the speech that is being spoken to help all beings and matters whether it be uh provisional or ultimate is is not problematic and that is the dharma which blah 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 the, the dharma does do that i agree with gibson which is closely connected to something yeah i don't know why there's a but that makes isn't it why there's a what why there's a uh. pot at the end uh -huh. Well, is, is it the yeah, it, this stuff here? Oh, narrow job. I see. I look at the root text. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, Chodong. Now, is, is a Nerdrella related to that first line or is it related to the next line? Uh, well, I let's see. see. Uh, I think we're going to need to connect it to something. The, yeah, because well, it has, has a shing down here. Yeah, the pa is a mistake, but that's what I'm saying. It should be wa. It should be drill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a typo or something. No, that is a legal spelling. Drugpa? Yeah. Hmm. I thought it was drugpa. Is it a dumb cup? Usually. <laughs> yeah. well, I just I mean I don't even know, but I just know so many times Geshe Michaels to be like, you know, in the old days they wrote this with a pa. Okay. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, we need this next bit of line. All right, so we are we have one minute. We'll have someone read it, uh -oh. and then we'll we'll put it on pause till next time. Mm -hmm. Two minutes. Uh, <laughs> one minute now. <laughs> if I take longer, then we can just pause. Um, Ina, can you read this next line for good luck? Sure. Uh Yay, we have twenty seconds left. Good job. Um, I think we're just going to pause here, guys, <laughs> it's gonna, mm -hmm. unless anyone, um, I think it's not, we'll just to move into our discussion. No, no, <laughs> fine. Okay. Fine. We'll just move yeah. into this here. Yeah. So, all right. That was fun. Thank you, everybody. I think I, 
sweated a little bit during that. <laughs> All right. So what did we learn today that could be applied to our daily life? Does anyone, does anyone, what did something strike anyone before I start asking questions? The thoughts yeah. in your head like, are not the same as what comes out of your mouth. Um, well, that's, <laughs> I, that's entirely, that's, that's true. <laughs> we shouldn't conflate those two. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> well, I, sometimes I it's true for me and it's problematic. I would have a lot fewer friends. <laughs> um i i get a little bit um uh, i don't know like disconnected sometimes from the lists of qualities and um of course these different teachings are for different students and i felt some resonance with the idea that the measure of an enlightened being speech is how it helps and then there's this idea of an enlightened being's ability to uh, emanate. Um, they can be, I mean, famously, right? They could be a, not even just a being, but a, a, a bridge or something. Um, all the places and, and like, like the moon is reflected instantly, spontaneously by every body of water and the tear in the eye of a child and um and then what makes it the buddha's speech what would make it the buddha's speech um it would be if it got if it got rid of my afflictions i i, re I really like this idea of defining enlightened qualities not by like what color outfit they're wearing or where in the world they're from, but like what it what it does to change the shape of your heart, and then who are the people in our lives that do that, and um, and can we we can only figure out we can only figure out later, um, when we reach the goal, and maybe if everybody reaches the goal someday, then we will have to look back and say that everyone we met and everything they said uh, led to our freedom from affliction and everyone around us was speaking enlightened speech so i i, I think it to play off that ben i also think that there's a suggestion here that when he did say that well, well that's the that's the intent of the of the speech in the mind of a Buddha, mm -hmm. like, is that, is, this is what I was thinking while we were all debating it. Is it the intent of the Buddha's speech when the Buddha had it in their mind before they spoke it and then spoke it, that then we would have their speech in our mind. And then we would ultimately then possess the 60 some qualities of a Buddha speech ourself by speaking the speech of a Buddha. Mm -hmm. You know, and in, in some ways, I kind of feel like there's a, you know, there, there's a link here to our own practice, like to have a point of view that what if what I am saying is the speech of the Buddha? You know, I'm not yet a Buddha, but the words that are in my head and the words that are coming out of my mouth were spoken by a Buddha, so by implication, could that be the one of the causes to create Buddhahood in myself? Hope so. Maybe. How you dedicate it, I guess. Mm. But I, I wonder what power there would be that if if you saw them as the speech of the Buddha and they were coming out of out of you, like are are we kind of pretending to be Buddhas by speaking the words of the Buddhas, but we're not yet Buddhas, but we're planting the seeds to be a Buddha? Good luck, translators. Uh, Sunam wants to share. Go ahead, Sunam. Um, 
I was reading the resource for the 64 qualities of a Buddha in the DCI level eight, which Geshe-la referenced as well. And these are qualities of the speech, which needs thousands and thousands and thousands of years to plant the seeds for. Have you ever had that situation in your life? Like I say exactly the same sentence as the other person, but it has a totally different effect on other people. Mm -hmm. So I would go and Utpala referenced it also a little bit in her argument. I repeat the words of the Buddha. Yes, I agree. I think I plant beautiful seeds by doing so. But because I have not gathered all the seeds for the 64 qualities, my words might be misunderstood, not heard in all languages, not engage people, not help them to get to enlightenment or whatever. Does any So I think the words itself and the qualities are two separate things. You can say the yeah. words, but if you don't have gathered the seeds for the qualities, I think you don't speak the words of a Buddha because you don't, just, they don't have the effect. I just heard from someone who, uh, they worked at a movie theater and um, at every time at the end of an order, they would get popcorn and candy and soda. And they would say at the end of every order, uh, will that be all for you today? And um, and sometimes they would get a very big order and every now and then someone would mishear them and think they were saying, will that be all for you today? And get very offended. <laughs> <laughs> you see, same exact words. Will that be all for you today? Yeah. Or will that be all for you? All so, for you? Yeah. <laughs> I, I totally agree. And I think so for me, the how I want to apply it in my life is maybe not listen exactly to the words, but check the person out, what quality they have that they plant the seeds that their words have this effect on people. Mm -hmm. That would be my, you know, how do you call that here? <laughs> um, yeah. Hmm. Well, I wonder, I mean, to keep going with that is if, if the Buddha speaks, does everyone hear the words of a Buddha? That's the other side. Devadatta. That's my karma. <laughs> you know, so I, is I, the I, Buddha a Buddha if they're not perceived as a Buddha? Well, yes. From whose side? It, it, uh, by someone <laughs> else. If they if they perceive if they're omniscient and they can perceive themselves as a Buddha. No, I'm talking about by other the, the people in the audience. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> uh, you have to be perceived by everyone to be a Buddha. I don't get it. Can't be. No, I just heard a little like self existentness going on. That's all. Um. And I'm I'm going to push it just a little bit then, you know, with that in mind, Venerable Pala and, and Sunam. Like you, you, me, okay, let me talk about myself. Me speaking the words of a Buddha. I'm not yet a Buddha. But that me is not self-existent either. Right? So is there, is there a practice in here that could help us generate our this the ability to see ourselves out of as a buddha because who sees us as a buddha like you know like sunam do you, like is it important how you perceive tim or is it important how tim perceives tim or is there and is there a difference does tim see tim as a buddha or does sunam see tim as a buddha or sunam it depends sees on your and my seeds <laughs> if I have the seeds to see you as Buddha, I see you as Buddha. If you have the seeds to see yourself as Buddha, you see yourself as Buddha. 
Right. And, and I, what I'm asking is, is there a, a suggestion of a practice in here that could help us plant those seeds for ourselves faster? That's what I'm suggesting. Well, to answer that, Tim, I've, I stayed in Sarah before and they, in different places like that, they definitely constantly recite words of the Buddha. <laughs> mm -hmm. So for whatever reasons, you know, people have decided that that's a very important practice for them to do. And as Geshe has taught when he talks about reciting words of the Buddha, is that we we have to understand how it is or why it is that reciting the words of the Buddha would have any effect whatsoever, right? Well, <laughs> what is their understanding about why mm -hmm. things are the way they are? If we don't have a very clear understanding, they won't have the effect of creating a Buddhist speech. Not powerful enough. Like what's our motivation and what's our understanding? They have to be big in order to create the, the, the what was the word word? The, the endless, Inconceivable oh, yeah. qualities of a Buddhist speech. The endless inconceivable qualities. <laughs> hmm. What else has come to people's minds? We have three minutes. Nothing at all. Yeah, I mean, on this topic, I would say there's there's that it's that question of intention, right? Why why I'm speaking the way I speak, and and that's about that's about as much as I can control. Uh, it's very hard to to know how someone is going to take my words, um, but at least if I'm trying to help. And then there's this uh, question that comes up nowadays a lot, and I think it's a very healthy question about the difference between intention and impact. And um, and I think intention on some level is all we have, but then you then you are attentive to the impact, and if your intention is sincere, then you will probably adjust your behavior based on what you learn from the impact if you want to help people if you want to help people not be hurt um so i don't know we keep trying and i'm i'm sorry i didn't mean to imply that all that popcorn was for you and um and maybe I should try a different way of phrasing it next time. But my my intentions were good, and I will try better next time. I, I will try something different. I will keep working on it. But right, because the the, in, the impact of the words is a separate seed than the planting of the words, right? The words, yeah. the impact, whatever impact comes back to you is from a prior seed, not the intention of the words right. that you anyway. Right. Yeah. And an earnest person, you know, with earnest, honest intention, they, uh, they adjust based on the impact that they see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's hard, even if you're earnest. And yes, it's hard. <laughs> yeah, but we try, we keep trying. We yeah. try to do better. Changing self and, to, and others is a very challenging practice when you really do it. Very yeah. hard. <laughs> That's it, what I it, hear. <laughs> so thank you all for joining today um thank you tim thanks for this lively conversation thanks thank you all for helping me attempt to translate this very difficult text um i i had i thought about making it easier on us and to go back to the bibliography or uh, the biography excuse me of of aria sangha to be like hey let's do something a little different um and geshe hadn't prepped it yet so I didn't want to attempt all that work myself. So we just went through this, but thank you all for your, your insights into, in, into the difficulty of this. It helped me a lot. And moving on.
<laughs> Thank you, Tim. Thank you. That was great. That was a uh, really nice work and great class. Juan, are you ready? I am. I knew it. I knew you would be. Are you still at the beach, dude? I'm glad. Yes. What about you? I'm yeah. on my way in a couple of days. What beach did you choose this time? The only beach, Del Mar. Oh, that's amazing. Cool, cool, cool. All right, cool. Actually, Geshela and Rob Haggerty Jr. are um, just getting there today, is it? Isn't it? Yes, yes indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> that's cool, Nick. You have been very, very lucky. So many visits in the last few months. It's a funny, uh, amazing thing. Yeah. That's great. So what what's that saying? If this is Mohammed, like a new rim rock. I know, right? We we should start thinking of like real estate and investing over there. <laughs> what is that <laughs> thing? Easy, uh, you might hope. If Mohammed doesn't go to the mountain, the mountain goes to Mohammed. I guess in this case you are Mohammed or something like that. <laughs> I better start growing my beard. Uh, uh, maybe. <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. All right, so I'm happy to see you all. And today we have a few sets of news and a special interview to share with you of a very, very cool project happening. It's a little bit of a surprise because it's, it's not a surprise in the sense of a new project, but it is a surprise on the sense of new, new news about that project. So let's go a quick review of what we have around the corner. One of the closest events that's happening is the Sky Harvest, Sky Harvest Second Reforestation Summit. And apparently I hear very good news because they already got the big group of people that they needed in order to have this successful program. So it's happening big time and people are still welcome to join if you are interested still. By now, maybe you have already decided if you are going or not, but who knows? Maybe somebody decides last minute, you can still join. They already have a big group of people going. I think it's going to be fun and very interesting, but also very, very meaningful and helpful for the land and the overall use of Diamond Mountain one of our very dear uh, worldview organizations that have been serving pretty much all of us. So thank you so much for doing this. Congratulations that this is happening and thank you for what you're doing. Also in September, in the next new, we have this series that YSI is running these days. Uh, mostly Earl has been in charge of producing it, but many other people involved. The Inner Kingdom teachings, uh, teachings that, were, that are based on what Geshe Michael taught during his trio retreat. There is another picture to show you one of the phrases that have been becoming famous about it. And the event is going to be happening on September the 7th. The next picture, you can see the QR code. There you go. And it's Earl going to be teaching the immersion on the inner kingdom. Today event from the 7th to the 8th. Also, just to remind you that every Thursday, Cristina Casica is... Yes, teaching the Sanskrit classes. Thank you very much. And I just saw a very cool video that I would like to share with all of you so you get an idea on how it is and what it is it about. So we will be sharing the content with you. Ah, the video, it's in the... I send it to the tech table in the Telegram group. Thank you. What's the next word? Somebody say that for me. Two minutes from Tarash. Beautiful Hello. video. Thank you very much. And 
<laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I hope we can watch Perfect. it. If we cannot, then I'll move on. But we should be able to watch it. We're watching it. Oh, cool. I'm not. That's great. Sorry. Perfect. Perfect. You see the different... It's not an accent exactly, but the rhythm of this word is Namarupa, Namarupa. So it actually has one, two, three, four, six beats. Namarupa. I did that wrong. Namarupa, Namarupa, Namarupa. So there's nothing very interesting about this word. How many long vowels does it have? Two. 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 Right, and you can hear that when we say it, right? Namarupa. All right, and this is a compound word that means name and form. In Sanskrit, they often don't use and. They often don't use is. They leave things out. So namarupa. In English, we would have to say name and form, not name form, but it's a joint word. Okay, it's done. Thank you. I don't know why I'm not seeing anything. I just looking at <laughs> this, but I'm glad to hear people can watch it. That's cool. Okay, so just to remind you, like these classes are happening every Thursday. There is the QR code, so you can, if you're interested, be part of the Telegram chat group that shares the materials, the schedule, the links to join. You can go there. Cool. Just to finish with the news and go move on to our interview, I want to remind people that if you are actually doing the good night book club practice, uh, you can send a little video on your like experience about it. Have you, how do you feel about it? How, what benefits have you seen? Has it helped you to focus better? Has it give you some new insights or is something that you recommend we cancel? Just kidding, but you can let us know how it's going for you and it may inspire other people to actually try if you find, have find benefits. Thank you so much. That's the news for today. And we're going to move on with our interview of the day with our friend, Chloe. Is she around? And can you help me to make a spotlight with her? Hello, Chloe. Hello. Hi, everybody. Oh, good to see you. Welcome. Thank you for being here today. Uh, today, well, many of you already know Chloe. She lives these days in Sedona, but she, she's originally from mainland China. Yes. So I was talking to you today, and we were just discussing how many, many, many things you're doing. And I want to personally thank you for the many projects that you are doing and the many help you are providing to many of the, our community members in Sedona. So first of all, welcome, but also thank you so much for everything you're doing. Uh, today, is specifically, we are here uh, to talk about, um, well, a few things that you already told me, but I would like to ask you just in general. What are the things that you've been most involved in the last few weeks or months? Oh, yes. I am been helping uh, with a new project, Bachelor's New Dream. It's called Innovation Retreats. Okay, that's, that's awesome. Let, can you share a little bit of what has been going on about it? Uh, yes, so innovation, uh, Tina, we can just talk about it first. Um, cool. uh, yes, so this is, yes, this is great, Tina, thank you. So we are going to have a innovation retreat, uh, which uh, Kashila will lead, uh, which is from September 13th to September 22nd. 
is a whole nine days program where Geshe Michael will be talking about how to do a circle day, how to do uh, a circle day retreat uh, in this sense that we are actually going to bring people to Diamond Mountain to do, do deep retreats, to uh, have innovation ideas, solve business problems, and create um, harmony relationships in your family life. So this is a very first um, one that we are going to do that will be open to both Chinese speaking students and also English speaking communities. So it, uh, you can see that we are having a Telegram group. If you are an English speaker, uh, you can join the English speaker Telegram group. And if you're a Chinese speaking student, 如果你讲中文的话,你可以加入微信, so you can join the WeChat. So this is a super exciting time to learn about retreat. So within this three days, uh, within the nine days, there are three full days of silence. And it will be a wonderful time. And it's a more relaxing schedule. You got to sleep in until uh, 7 a.m. <laughs> And then Gesha will be teaching daily and you will have wonderful food and a very everybody will have their own space, no shared rooms. And then mostly you want we want to create this conducive environment for meditation. And for people who haven't learned the um, previous two, we actually had two sessions already in Chinese that happened. But this will be the very first time that for English speakers opening to the rest of the world. So right now, if you like, let's go to see what happened previously uh, last oh, time. The, cool. With the so video? We, yes. So there, um, Stanley brought everybody to Dunhuang, which is the seed partner of Innovation Retreats. We are in the future going to create, uh, replicate Dunhuang in the West. So let's see what happened last month. Yuan Chen 一切的事情用圆圈日来找到你的人生的方向跟目标无论是阶段性的还是这一整辈子的无论是短期的还是长远的那同时你也可以用它来检查自己是否有偏离了你当初的梦想你当初的愿景你当初的初心 It's very, very powerful to do any retreat near the place where great people did their retreat. And I think uh, if you are able to do this retreat this weekend at the Dunhuang location, uh, you are very, very lucky. Why are all those caves there in Dunhuang? Because for many centuries, the people went there to do their retreat. <laughs> then your mind becomes much more quiet and you can hear great, great ideas because great, great ideas are often whispered. And I, I have to say one thing, to learn to hear the creative voices in your mind is the biggest fun thing in your whole life.
Wow, so wonderful. It's an amazing production and a great inspirational video. Yeah, stunning <laughs> video, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Chloe, so much for bringing it uh, for us and for the product productors, Mr. Stanley and Mrs. Xiaoping. <laughs> thank yes, you, thank I, you. We have to thank Stanley and Xiaoping who holds such a high standard. We always, I'm amazed when I see that video and how the people who actually did retreat in Dunhuang, which, you know, that's the whole point of Gashua's new dream to bring this lifestyle of going to retreat to Sangong, right? The, we, we need to study wisdom, then we, we meditate, then we go to retreat. That's the three ways to study uh, wisdom. So I'm super happy and honored to be involved in this program and share this with all of you guys and opening this uh, to the whole world where the English speakers get to join the next one in less than one month. So I'm super excited um, to see you guys either online or in person in Diamond Mountain. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Chloe. And we'll talk again soon. And for now, we are getting ready to go to our next class with Wardsmith. And then I can just say thank you so much for the opportunity. That's great also being here in Mexico and enjoying time with family at the beach. So see you next time. And let's go back with Wardsmith.